So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, just depending on where in the world you are. We, about half of our viewers are not located in the U.S. So for some folks, uh, it's three in the morning. Why you would get up at three in the morning to watch this, I don't know. I mean, but a lot of people do. So <clears throat> thank you so much for your interest. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, uh, mental health and heart attack and stroke risk. Um, this will be the third video that we've done in this space. I'm going to briefly mention a couple of the other two videos. Um, today, it's can depression cause a heart attack? The short answer is yes, but it gets a lot deeper than that. Uh, before we do, just a brief reorientation, brief uh, repeat, brief uh, uh, internal ad for this, the content that we have. So this channel is all about helping people recognize the most common causes of heart attack and stroke, things that unfortunately most primary care docs don't really know how to diagnose very well, let alone manage very well. Things like cardiovascular inflammation, um, prediabetes, insulin resistance. Um, there are gaps, and it's not that I'm throwing stones at anybody. I've spent, I've been a corporate uh, medical director my whole life, uh, chief medical officer for large corporations like uh, MD Live, um, <clears throat> with about 800 docs at the time I was uh, doing that role. Um, a, a company called Physician uh, uh, Partners about uh, 1,200 docs, a uh, company called um, uh, Premise. It used to be called Meridian Onsite. Um, about 500 docs providing health care for, um, for employers. <clears throat> the bottom line is, and it's not just my experience, it's in the science. You go back and you look. You look at uh, information from Harvard Health. You look at information from... Um, other organizations, Hopkins, a lot of my folks at Hop, uh, old friends at Hopkins have presented a lot of research indicating that the typical primary care doctor just doesn't know how to diagnose, let alone treat and manage insulin resistance, prediabetes very well. Um, plaque, assessment of plaque, uh, one of the key components of preventing heart attack and stroke. That's not very good either. Um, the, the go-to has always been, well, let's get a stress test. Stress test is not the best way to evaluate plaque. You don't get any, you know, a stress test is not positive unless you get 50%, um, uh, loss of blood flow. Um, 70% of heart attacks occur in hearts patients where there isn't 50% loss of blood flow. So there's just some, some things that are incredibly important to all of our health that the medical community is missing right now. So that's what these topics are all about. You can get them in a webinar where you actually um, can get some labs with us. You can uh, have some uh, discussion with, we have a large group discussion to talk about uh, what you really need to do, what you really need to know. If you're not into doing a webinar type of approach, we have courses. Each of the courses is about half dozen, maybe a little bit more short videos. Bottom line is for $39.49. And sometimes when it's on sale for 19 bucks, you can spend a couple of hours and learn more about how to prevent your own heart attack and stroke than your doctor, most doctors know. Um, we do, we do provide care. Uh, we're still providing care, still open. Um, <clears throat> we're probably going to be closing our patient panels over the next few months, uh, for any new patients at least. Um, but right now we're still open. We have a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, one is to just, uh, see, uh, pay for the visits. The other is to do like this, to just do a monthly subscription. <laughs> Speaking of stress tests, um, we've got a couple of upcoming books. One is uh, with a, uh, a viewer and uh, now a friend of mine who's described his own um, 
his own activities, his own experiences in having a heart attack, realizing that, you know what? He had full-blown diabetes and he had no clue and getting out of that problem and dealing with it. Um, <clears throat> the other book that we've got coming out soon is Tim Russert. It's what a stress test can't tell you. Tim Russert's only a couple of pages, but the reason we mention him is he is the, he's the poster boy for, uh, you can have a, you can ha pass your stress test with flying colors and die from a heart attack. That's exactly what he did. This book tells you how that happened, why it happened, and most importantly, what you can do to keep that from happening to you. Um, <clears throat> so to the program for today, does depression cause heart attack? Now, I mentioned that uh, this is the third video. Let me just describe the first two videos very quickly. The, uh, the first one was on a thing called Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy. Oh, gosh, a couple of huge words. And what do they mean? Well, both of these videos, the other one was on a thing called vital exhaustion. Um, what does that mean? I'll, I'll cover those very briefly. Um, Takotsubo's, I'm going to give you a few slides on that because it's a very, very interesting story. Takat and Subo, actually it means, is a Jap both Japanese words meaning octopus trap. What does octopus trap have to do with heart attack from, um, uh, from stress? Again, we'll cover that in just a second. Takatsubos is actually an immediate overwhelming stress. This vital exhaustion was a video that we did on chronic stress. So the chronic, the, we'll, we'll cover the second one first. The chronic stress was um, uh, European uh, Society of Cardiology, March of 2021, exhaustion linked with increased risk of heart attack in men. What they were talking about was the thing they called, this was done in um, uh, European Russian uh, area, uh, Eastern Europe. And basically they were describing chronic stress in men and its link to heart attack. If you have interest in it, you can go back uh, and go to YouTube, search my name and vital exhaustion or stress and heart attack. I'm going to come out of this, uh, this deck because I couldn't get the two decks to work together and go into the deck on Takatsubos again, because it's an interesting story. I didn't cover this story on the um, on the YouTube live. So um, you may not have seen it, even if you watch our live activities. So here's the story. This is just one story of many. Again, Takatsubos is a known medical condition. Uh, in this true story, it was a 70 year old woman. She's standing in the ICU next to her husband who's lying in bed the doctor comes in and in the first 30 seconds, the doctor said, these are actual quotes. He's dying. He won't survive the day. There's nothing we can do. The woman falls on her face on the floor. She bleeds from broken nose and teeth, but that really wasn't her biggest problem. Her biggest problem was, uh, her heart, uh, her pulse became very minimal and she stopped breathing. Both of them died within a 24 hour period. That was, and the diagnosis was Takatsubos. What is Takatsubos? Uh, one of the common terms for it is a broken heart syndrome, you know, and it happens more often than, than you might think. This starts to bleed in, out of the, uh, the issue of overwhelming, <clears throat> excuse me, of overwhelming immediate stress and starts to get into the chronic stress component. In the six months after a spouse's death, the odds of dying may be up to 70% higher. But let's go back. That's not what happened. Uh, women are more likely. Uh, but let's go back and talk about this woman. She had an immediate death. And why is it called that weird word, Takatsubo? 
Well, here's what happens. If you get an image of the heart, it starts to look like this instead of like this. So this is a healthy heart. You see you've got a V-shaped on that ventricle. That's the real uh, pump that the body uses. In Takatsubos, something happens to where the, it, it balloons out. The walls of the ventricle become thin and it's called enlarged because, again, you've got a smaller amount here, uh, more muscle um, uh, strength and uh, thickness, and it's able to pump more effectively. With Takatsubos, it just gets flabby and big, which is, so back to the term about Taka and Subo, that's, it's an octopus trap. That's how the Japanese uh, trap octopi, octopods, octopi, uh, an octopus uh, many times. So, <clears throat> and obviously we all know what, uh, what the Japanese do with, uh, with octopus. I used to love that, by the way, but since I discovered my own insulin resistance, I have to get sashimi instead of uh, sushi because of the rice. Now, back to Takatsubos. It's a cardiomyopathy, cardio meaning heart, myopathy meaning uh, myo meaning muscle, and pathy meaning damage or disease in the heart muscle. Again, you see two very different images. These are um, drawn images, and these are actual images from, uh, from patients when their heart. Uh, this is a, a, a Takatsubo heart over here, and that's a, a more healthy one. So <clears throat> well, now let me just go back and clarify something else. Not only is this not chronic stress, it's an immediate overwhelming stress. Number two, it's not your typical heart attack. There's no plaque. There's no clot. We don't really know what's going on. It does appear to have something to do with overwhelming um, fight or flight, sympathetic uh, uh, nerve activities. It also uh, has some link with loss of muscle function and troponin. Now, <clears throat> you know, the reality is, could the doctor have done better? I think we all would acknowledge that. Um, but again, let's go back for a minute and, and uh, talk about something else. That was Takatsubos, which is that immediate death, which happens more often in 70-year-old uh, age, you know, over 60-year-old women. Uh, it does have, has happened in men too, but mostly in women. That's that short-term, immediate, overwhelming stress. Let's get back to... Today's topic, um, <clears throat> depression. Now, depression and heart disease are commonly, uh, commonly coexist. In the COVID world, uh, the term uh, uh, co uh, comorbidities is a, is a very commonly understood and used term. And depression and heart disease are very much co comorbidities. Um, you could say that having a heavy heart is, is a little bit more than just a saying. The CDC, as conservative they are, as they are, they link mental health disorders and chronic disease, uh, chronic stress with heart, heart disease. According to Harvard Health Publishing, depression is about twice as likely to occur in people with heart disease compared to the general population. Now, this gets into the whole chicken versus egg issue. Does the heart disease cause the uh, depression, or does the depression cause the heart disease? And yes, there's a third option as well. Is there something else causing both of those? The reality is it's all three. Uh, heart disease does appear to cause depression, uh, impacts our lifestyle, uh, impacts a lot of things which impact depression. Um, and we'll get into that. Let's actually, let's talk about that in just a, a, a minute or two. But before we do, I do have to add the last comment. And we don't cover that that much in this deck. Um, heart disease causes depression. Depression can cause heart disease. And yes, insulin resistance can clearly cause both. 
So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about uh, definitions. When people think about depression, they think, well, I feel down. Uh, feeling down is not depression. It's just that feeling down is a mood. Depression is a bigger issue. It involves things what, like what we would call uh, the neurovegetative signs. Neuro meaning you know, brain and vegetative meaning um, the signs of our daily metabolism. So, for example, what you'll see, the thing that, differ that differentiates uh, depression from a, a depressed mood, you're no longer interested in activities you once enjoyed. And this lasts. It's not just happens for a day or two. That's called anhedonia. You know, um, hedon, hedonism is somebody that lives to enjoy themselves. An is the opposite. So anhedonia is nothing. Uh, you don't enjoy anything. But the more classic neurovegetative signs, loss of appetite. And loss of appetite can go the other direction and result in binge eating as well, because you never feel satisfied. And some other reasons, too insomnia or excessive sleeping, you know, so it impacts your appetite, it impacts your sleep, uh, it impacts loss of energy. So again, you start getting into the classic neurovegetative signs, and that's what really differentiates a garden variety mood problem from true uh, metabolic depression. You have difficulty concentrating, feelings of worthlessness, suicidal thoughts, irritability, now, on the heart disease side, obviously, the most common thing that we tend to talk about on this channel is coronary heart disease. We mentioned Takasubo's a minute ago, which is an, an acute form of heart failure. And obviously, you also have things like uh, valve disease, arrhythmias, atrial fib is something we've covered many times, and it results in a lot of these uh, challenges as well. So why did depression and heart disease commonly coexist? Well, heart disease can lead to depression and depression can lead to heart disease. You know, we covered that a minute ago and I said we'd get a little bit deeper into detail with it. Lifestyle and physical changes brought about by a heart, heart attack, heart condition, such as surgery, inability to exercise, inability to sleep well. These can lead to isolation, uh, sadness, again, those neurovegetative components, which um, mess up your metabolism. You know, you lose sleep one night and you you can get uh, insulin resistance for the next 48 hours. So emotional changes that arise from a heart uh, diagnosis also often bring anxiety. So there's a major overlap between anxiety, uh, depression, and uh, stress itself. Uh, depression can lead to a heart disease. So, <clears throat> you know, the other side, it works the other direction. Depression, depression is associated with higher level of stress hormones, cortisol. Uh, that increases blood sugar, blood pressure, and causes a rise in damage uh, to the uh, arteries. People with depression have stickier platelets, which are found in the blood, which can lead to increased blood clotting. Remember, that's really the actual mechanism for heart attack and stroke. That's why we can't really predict it basically looking at, you know, I mean, that's, you know, looking at um, a cardiac cath. That's why a stress test doesn't predict a heart attack. A cardiac cath doesn't predict a heart attack. It's an acute clotting problem. And again, depression can increase that. People who are depressed or, or anxious are more likely to engage in risky behaviors such as smoking, skipping medications, inactivity, uh, overeating, etc. Now, this starts to get to the, uh, again, once you begin to realize that this is a cyclical issue or a spiraling issue, you begin to realize how one can cause the other and vice versa. And as we will... Uh, as you will see throughout here, um, diabetes, prediabetes, very much related to all, all of these same activities. So depression, you get fat fatigue, you feel overwhelmed, uh, excessive sleeping or not sleep, sleeping not enough, poor sleep. You get changes in behavior, you get sedentary, you start taking risks like smoking, 
uh, you have, you don't take your medications. You start getting biological changes, increase in stress hormone, inflammation, blood pressure, blood sugar, uh, which leads to heart disease, chest pain, shortness of breath, heart palpitations, uh, cardiovascular inflammation, which leads to uh, emotional issues like feeling like a burden, emotional distress, et cetera. So again, after you begin to look at the microscopic and metabolic components of what's going on, it becomes much easier to understand how um, heart disease can lead to uh, mental health disease, mental health disease can lead to heart disease, and uh, insulin resistance clearly leads to both. So, <clears throat> so that all sounds like a bunch of uh, maybe YouTube doc talking about what he or she thinks is rational and how it can happen. Is there, where's the science on this? Well, there's good science on this. This is from, I mean, and the science, the literature is, uh, scientific literature is just replete from this. I mean, you can't get, uh, this is a scientific statement from the American Heart Association. Now, I, as well as a whole bunch of people, have plenty of arguments with the American Heart Association, but not on this issue. I don't think uh, there, there are many people, I don't know of anybody that would argue with this component and their interpretation of the science. And here's what the, their interpretation is. I mean, they've got a, a meta-analysis in here, which is study of, of all the... Um, the experiments, the trials, the studies done in this area. And their interpretation was this. People who have heart disease and depression face a higher risk of disability and death compared to those who have heart disease, but no depression. So again, that mental health is a significant added or lack of mental health. Mental disease is a significant added risk factor. In the seven studies that they looked at in this meta-analysis, People who had both conditions were two to five times more likely to die from a cardiac issue compared to those who had heart disease alone. So what can I do to lower my risk? All of that's very, very fine, Dr. Brewer, but you diddle around in science too much and you don't, you're not clear enough about what can we do to, to fix this? Well, Find a support group. Uh, number one, recognize that mental health is an important issue, especially um, uh, my, the ladies in my in my family like to talk badly and critical about old white guys. And yeah, I'm an old white guy. So uh, that culture tends to my culture, especially. I'm from I'm from South Carolina, the uh, southern southeastern United States. And like many um, boomer generation males, it's we've been taught to ignore mental health issues. That's dangerous, guys. It's dangerous. So go out, find a support group, eat healthy. Uh, stop uh, denying uh, potential mental health issues, reduce your stress levels, get enough sleep, exercise, and enjoy your life. Enjoy the sun. And I don't think he meant exactly what we're talking about, but give us a break here and a little bit of uh, poetic license. This was uh, Nelson Mandela's quote, a good head and a good heart are always a formidable combination. So that's it for our uh, program. Uh, Aspen, you want to give us the w water ball? So speaking of water ball, I had a patient last week. It was so funny. Uh, he and I had gone through our usual hour of back and forth regarding his specific issues and uh, my consultation, a few uh, 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 prescriptions and things like that. And I said, uh, anything else? He said, nope, nope, I'm done. I'm just waiting for the water ball. So 
<laughs> I appreciated that comment. So Amer from uh, uh, Amer Alguer, Gayer. Hello from Germany. Hello to you, Amer. Um, uh, thank you, Aspen. Bart, good morning. Tuned in and ready to listen. Bambi Grage, it's so good to hear back from you, Bambi. Bambi got us started on a, gosh, I'm trying to remember what topic. Was it K2, Bambi? It was something, gosh, a couple of years ago. Um, Fort Worth West Side. Good morning, Dr. B. A couple of questions. Okay, hit us with the questions, uh, Fort Worth. Robert Weiss, North Georgia Mountains, I believe. And for those of you who are in other parts of the world, I don't think Robert's talking about Georgia, the Eastern Bloc country or the Eastern European country. I think George, uh, Robert's talking about North Georgia, United States. I, actually, my grandmother's parents, uh, her family, uh, she grew up in the North Georgia mountains. Uh, North Georgia, U.S. mountains, not, uh, not the other Georgia, not the country. JR, JR, you really, if you don't mind, I would love for you to, uh, to identify yourself. You're not the JR that used to work with us, are you? Um, what brand of Berber, uh, Barberine do you recommend? I don't really um, hit the like button. Yes, please hit the like button. When you do that, uh, it tells the, um, the YouTube AI, this is good information. It's information that other humans need to hear and see. Uh, as a human, I'm looking at it. I value it. And uh, yes, it's very, uh, uh, very important to get likes, even more important to get uh, referrals to your uh, social media. Because when somebody comes in from a link on your social media uh, channel or your social media site, uh, that makes a big deal for the YouTube AI. Now, Berberine, um, I don't really have a significant brand preference on Berberine. I have brand preferences on a few things, a few supplements. Um, bergamot, uh, I prefer bergamot, and uh, niacin, I uh, prefer um, uh, enduricin. Now, having mentioned, when we, whenever we mention a brand, the AI, speaking of the AI on YouTube, uh, the AI notices that and cuts off uh, uh, payment for uh, for video views. So again, please acknowledge that. And if you guys get a chance to help us with the channel, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Aspen's showing how you can do that. You can do it through Patreon. You can do it through PayPal. And you can do it right here on YouTube Live. You just go down to that uh, super chat. <coughs> JR. Sorry, Berberine. Yes, correct. Amer, hello from Germany. Good morning. Fort Worth, West Side. Not sure what that meant. Vagabond Sojourner. Vagabond's been here for a while. The YMC had it right. Mind, body, and spirit. It's very true. You know, speaking of which, there is a um, – I did another video. There's a very interesting couple of studies that's been done – on people that survived uh, the concentration camps, the Holocaust, German concentration camps. And those survivors live longer than their peers. Now you might say, well, that's because, you know, they had a healthier constitution already. Yeah, probably, but you could, and then the next statement is, well, they don't have diabetes, they don't have this or that. That's not true. When you look at all the classic markers of things like diabetes, they had even more of it, but they survive longer than their peers. Yes, I think they have something in terms of their constitution, but I think it's this. I think it's mind, body, and spirit. So <clears throat> Fort Worth West Side, if cardiovascular inflammation sources you cite are curtailed, to acceptable levels is verified by blood tests, lifestyle changes, et cetera. Can they reduce or eliminate the meds provided follow-up is done? Yeah, that's the whole, that's the whole, the whole thing about what we do, uh, Fort Worth. Um, 
these things, these, uh, the cardiovascular inflammatory markers, uh, HSC C reactive protein, um, uh, microalbumin creatinine ratio. I'm, I'm throwing out some words. They're fairly technical, but I've done plenty of videos on them. If you have any interest in them at all, you can look up my name on the YouTube and look up CV inflammation or cardiovascular inflammation. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> how do you, uh, how do you decrease those cardiovascular uh, markers? MPO, myeloperoxidase, plaque 2 LPPLA2, uh, microalbumin creatinine ratio, and C-reactive protein. Well, the most powerful things are not drugs anyway. They are lifestyle. There's been uh, studies, uh, multiple studies, showing what we all know or should know, you can't out-medicate a lifestyle issue. You know, I get people coming to me on a regular basis for worth, especially now that most of my patients come from the channel. The first few times, it sort of threw me for a loop. I saw patients, let me do a thing here. I saw patients that um, had plaques, significant evidence of previous damage. But when I looked at things like current insulin resistance, current uh, cardiovascular inflammation. There was none of that. Now I've, I've become very accustomed to it. I see it all the time. And my first, the first thing I, I mention is, have you perhaps had a significant weight loss episode, like 30 pounds or more? And sure enough, get that all the time. So yes, you know, uh, a lot of you have read some of the Jason Fung books, some of the other things where he talks about, yes, you can, quote, cure diabetes. Um, you could quibble over the definition, but you can you can reverse these problems. No question. So Fort Worth, odd thing, was taking metformin for a year to lower blood glucose on keto, too, but could rarely get it below 105. Stop the drug. Now I routinely get CGM and blood stick readings in the 85 to 95 range. What gives? I don't know. That's a very interesting. Uh, that is very interesting, Fort Worth. And uh, I don't know. Vagabond Sojourner, what makes LPPLA2 so important? Well, let me see if I can find a um, insulin resistance, prediabetes, uh, inflammation webinar. Um, let me see if we can find, uh, yep, we're getting close to it. Let me show you. So, First of all, this is an inflammation panel, myeloperoxidase, LPPLA2, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, microalbumin creatinine. Um, those are the inflammatory markers. What causes uh, them? Well, this is LPPLA2, plaque 2, which you were just asking about, Vagabond. So this is the bloodstream. And this is the intima, that, that single cell lining of the artery wall. This is the artery wall itself. That's the smooth muscle. And this is the, again, the intima area. So these are what we call macrocytes. When there is plaque and fatty stuff, that's what this is. This is plaque. This is fatty stuff between the muscle layer called the media and the intima layer uh, or the lining uh, layer, the endothelial cells called the intima. When there's too much plaque, you get into a process where we take friendly fire. That's what inflammation is. Uh, the normal macrocytes that are flowing through the blood start getting um, these things, uh, they're called cytokines. Um, they're different things that attract these immune cells. And these immune cells more and more of them start coming in. When they start activating, they release more cytokines. So you get into this spiral of inflammation. 
the uh, part of what these macrocytes uh, release when they become what's called a foam cell, um, they release enzymes which are meant by our immune system to um, digest, to break down that plaque. Well, what that's exactly what they do. You get this liquid core. And this sort of looks like a pimple. And let me go back to a, uh, an image that I used uh, earlier, or a, a, a comment that I made earlier. You know, we talk about um, Big Russ, Tim Russert, and him dying uh, from a heart attack. Even though he had passed his stress test with flying colors, he had this process going on. Now, the reason I referred back to Tim Russert was this. They said on the autopsy that they did on Mr. Russert, when they opened up his aorta and his other arteries, you saw these. They said his arteries looked like the face of a teenager with really bad acne. These pimples were just all over the place. And you know what? If that, uh, if one of these pimples uh, breaks, puts a uh, hot plaque out into the bloodstream, that causes a clot. It's the clot that causes the heart attack, not the, um, the fat itself. But the fat leads to it by stirring up this cardiovascular inflammation. So that was a great question, uh, Vagabond. I appreciate you bringing it up. Gives me a chance to head down a bunny hole. Um, Kevin McCord. Dr. McCord has appeared on this show a couple of times, a uh, family practitioner with a great background in this area, doing uh, more and more prevention as he uh, evolves with his, uh, his practice. Uh, when we as doctors understand depression as a symptom with multiple root causes, we can find the healing opportunities and empower patients toward improved emotional hygiene, healing heart and soul. Very true. James's Aunt Martha. I read that aloe vera helped heal the pancreas. So I haven't heard that. So I have Daryl. I think Daryl might be uh, your, your spouse. Uh, drinking two or more of uh, George's aloe vera juice every morning. Well, good luck on that. I hadn't heard of that. That's very interesting. Thank you so much, Aunt Martha, for sharing that. Robert Weiss. Correct. USA, North Georgia Mountains. Very, very laid back, which is a good thing. Now, I have to say, uh, most people don't describe me as laid back. And I think they're, I personally, you know, you, you get into that tape, type A personality. I personally love to refer to a, a, some references that I saw, which was like type A2 or something where, some people just love uh, to be doing something. They love to be totally immersed in, uh, in a project, a project that helps others. And uh, that's what I love doing. I think really, once we get down to it, most of us feel that way. And uh, if you're doing a project that helps others, if you're totally immersed in something like that, it tends to be good for your mental health. Bambi Grage, maybe it was the natto. I think you're right, Bambi. Just ordered some natto spores to make my own natto. FYI, you need to introduce slowly, otherwise gastric distress. Huh. You mean my own gastric distress or? Uh, oh, oh, the, you, you need to introduce the natto slowly or otherwise you'll get gastric distress. Thank you, uh, Bambi. Appreciate it. See you Monday. Okay, good. That's good to hear. I look forward to seeing you. Fort Worth Westside. Ability to interact with a trained specialist such as yourself via YouTube at no cost in this forum is incredible. Thank you so much, Fort Worth. I do appreciate that. Uh, can I do an accurate OGTT type test myself at home using CGM and ingesting the 75 grams of glucose liquid like those are sold, those that are sold to people uh, needing them when, when their blood sugar gets low? I have tons of people doing that. I've done that myself. Actually, 
Uh, I'm working with a company called I'm Aware. I M A W A R E. They're as as they've admitted, they're not quite ready for prime time yet. They're working out some kinks, but that is the whole idea behind what I'm Aware is doing and what some uh, other groups are doing. I would clearly recommend that. I did one once, uh, Fort Worth, and I've got a video on it. Um, I don't know what the title is, but if you do a YouTube and uh, do it's like YouTube, my name, and applesauce, it should come up. And my point on that was I actually did an OGTT at home using uh, finger stick technology and applesauce. The point behind that was... Everybody thinks of applesauce as healthy. Give, give some to your kids six times a day, right? Mm. And I think this was Mott's applesauce with sugar added. My point was three things of applesauce was more than your routine 75 grams of glucose. And guess what my blood sugar did after that OGTT? Pew, went way up. So thanks for asking. Bar Robinson, without vigorous exercise, being outdoors and deep breathing, my mild OCD and Tourette syndrome would be through the roof. Enjoy your presentations as always. Thank you so much for sharing that, Bart. Thanks again. Robert Weiss, by the way, minimal stress, planning on fire pit time tonight. I'm jealous. I live in a condo area. We've got great uh, places for walking. I end up doing between five and 20,000 steps a day because most of the time I'm on the phone, I, uh, I'm walking. But I don't have, we don't have fire pits here. I love that idea. I wish we did. We have extra chairs if you have time. Well, thank you for the invitation, Robert. I appreciate it. About 8 p.m., understand the subject for today very, very well. That's why I'm here. Fort Worth, you're absolutely correct. Russert was a victim, like many of us, of the MIC, Medical Industrial Complex. Eisenhower should have referred to them, too, in his speech about the medical industrial complex. It killed him, too. Bart Robinson, about the presentations, that is very valuable. Thank you, Bart. I appreciate that. Fort Worth, have to go catch the rest of the Q&A on the recorded show later. Thanks again, Dr. B. And we are getting to the, um, uh, to the end of the questions. You know, it's not because I, uh, I have to run today. It's because there's limited interest. Again, it gets to that whole issue of uh, that boomer generation, especially of males. Um, you know, we, we've got, what, about half the... the uh, the viewers today in attendance that we usually have. And it's, again, I think it's a, an unfortunate um, component or demonstration of the fact that uh, boomer males just want to deny uh, mental health. So thank you so much for your interest today. Uh, and we'll sign out.